Here we're creating a table that is a PPI table, Partitioned Primary Index. And what that really means is, is that we're going to still have a primary index that will be used to hash the data to the proper AMP. But once it gets on the AMP, it usually sorts by the row ID. We're not going to have the AMP sort by the row ID. We're going to have each AMP sort by the partition that we give it. Now there's three types of partitioning. Simple, as in this case, range N, and case N. And here you can see we've got a primary index of employee number, but we say partition by DEPNO, and that's how each AMP's going to sort it. Here's another PPI table, partition primary index, but this is a range N. So once again, we say, here's the table name, here's all my columns, my primary index here is going to be order number, but I want you to partition this by a range N. I've got the date range between here and here of the data you're going to see, and I want each interval to be one day. So you should have 365 or 366 different partitions with each AMP saying, hey, we were sorted by the day. I hold January 1st stuff at the top, January 2nd stuff after that, and if each AMP does this and the query comes in and says, I want to know all of the orders between January 1st and January 2nd. Each AMP just reads a small slice of data from the top. Here's another example of a partition primary index table. We're using a range N, but we're going to partition each interval one month. So let's take a little closer look at this. First of all, we list the create table, table name, open paren, all of the columns in their data type, close paren. Primary index is on order number. That's how the data will be distributed to the proper AMP. But when each AMP gets that, it says, listen, we're going to have one year of data because I have a range N on order date between 2012-01 and 2012, December 31st, each interval one month. And I will show you exactly how that's going to look in our next picture. Now, each AMP has gotten its rows from this table based on being hashed by the primary index of order number. But now, when the rows come to the AMP, they're going to sort it by the order date and the month of order date. So they've got 12 partitions in a year. And you can see my partitions are 01 to 12. This is called sorting by the row key. Normal tables sort by the row ID from each row but you add the partition number in and now you're talking about a row key. In this PPI table, I'm partitioning by the order date again, but each interval, seven days. In this amazing PPI demonstration, I want you to notice what I'm doing. I'm taking and I'm partitioning by a range and the subscriber ID between one and 500 million subscriber IDs, each interval 10,000. So this is going to break up those subscriber IDs on each one of those amps in packets of 10,000. So anytime somebody's really querying and they want to know all of the subscribers between here and here, it's not going to be a full table scan. We've seen partition primary index table that use simple partitioning. Partition by DEPNO. We've seen where they use the range N. I want to partition by each month. Now we're going to use a case N partitioning. And in this PPI table, we're saying, I want you to do a case N on the order total. And it's almost like writing a case statement to say, listen, if the orders are less than 1,000, they're going in partition one. If they're less than five, they're going in partition two, and so on. And this will partition things the way we see fit. This is what the table looks like when we partition by our case N. All the order totals less than 1,000 are in partition number one. Between that 1,000 and 5,000, they're in partition two, and so on. If it falls through all the way through the case, then it goes into the no case partition. And if the order total is null, it goes into the unknown partition. 
in previous versions of Teradata, when they first came out with this, they put two bytes in front of every row and they go, listen, you can have 65,535 partitions on each amp. But now, people have actually gone more than that, so I think it's like 9.2 quintillion. What does that mean? Seems like a lot. Here I've got my case in partitioning, and I list less than a thousand, less than five. But notice at the very bottom where I say no case or unknown. This means if you've got an order total that is more than 20,000 and it's going to fall through that case, you put it in the no case or unknown. Or if that order total is null, you put them together there. This lesson brought to you by Coughing Data Warehousing. Need to learn SQL for Natiza, Teradata, or Aster? Visit coughingdw.com for our helpful training guides. With Teratom, SQL stands for So Quickly Learned. Hi, this is Tom Coughing. Thank you so much for watching the video. Please hit subscribe to make sure you are kept up to date on all our videos.